Okay, welcome to part two. So in the last part, we went ahead and we set up our model over here. And now we are going to set up our shader, which should not be too difficult. So we end up with creating over here our moss master material. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by importing our mossy texture over here. So let's import this. Here we go. And then, yeah, let's get started with this one. So very simple. We have a base color. We have a normal that goes in the, to the normal slot. And this one, um, AO, roughness, and D we do not need. So this should be fine. Okay, perfect. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into my master material. And I just want to set the blend mode to be masked. Note that we are actually not going to go for translucent. This is because if we would use translucent on an object that has like multiple translucent layering effects, it will not look very good. So having this over here, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a very quick right click texture coordinate node. Like this. And I'm going to multiply this texture coordinate with a scalar parameter. And I can just do S click for this. And I call this tiling over here and just set the default value to like one but this way we can just uh, control the tiling if needed so that's uh, this is just like some very basic setup we throw this into our UVs maybe it would be nice to have another multiply down here with a constant tree vector and with this one you want to right click and convert this to parameters so that we can use it in a material instance and just call this color overlay Set this to white by default. There we go. So that we can also control our base color over here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we basically want to go ahead and we want to get started with our masks. And for this, we pretty much only need one because we can swap them out. So if we go and import, let's say the densest, densest mask over here, this one, then what I want to do is I probably want to go ahead and want to give some control. Let's do a multiply and a scalar parameter. And call this mask underscore strength. And I believe we need to set the default to one. Here we go. So if we plug this into our opacity mask, then we have at least some control over our mask just to make it nice. And here you can see the result. It's just like these. Whoa, didn't mean to do that. Here we go. Just like these little specs over here. And we should be able to, if I go, for example, for like three. Yeah, perfect. Two, one. Okay, yeah, great, that works. So we got that one. I'm just going to go ahead and just to keep things clean, I'm going to convert all of these to scalar parameters. Base color, just in case I like want to ever change it. Convert the parameter, normal, map. Roughness, over here. So we got those done, and then over here, this one is important, so we need to convert this to parameter and just call this moss underscore mask, like this. Okay, perfect. So we got those things also done. Now there's one last thing that I want to do. And that is that I want to give control over actually the fading of the edges. And this is why we did like the vertex colors. So we can very simply add a, um, a vertex color node over here. And I just realized that I did not turn on the importation of vertex colors. So I do need to quickly check because... I believe that we did it for all channels at the same time. So it should not matter which one. But I might need to do this in a specific channel. Let's go into our rock and just open it up. And we just need to go and then down here. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Whoops. All the way down. Import settings. Mesh. Vertex color import option. And we want to go ahead and want to do replace. And then we just want to press re-import. Over here. So that should do the trick. And then if I just quickly go down here, I should be able... Um, oh god, they, they moved this around. So I'm a little bit lost in where I can actually find this one now. Oh yeah, here are vertex colors. Okay, so black to white. That should be fine. Yeah, so we can use any color that we want for this as far as I can see. But we will know soon enough. So let's just go ahead and use, for example, the red. Or you, well, actually, let's just use all data. You can also do that. So we are going to multiply this mask 
along with another multiply. So first of all, we are going to multiply our vertex colors with a scalar parameter that we'll call fading strength and set this to one. And then we are going to multiply this with this mask. And then I always get confused if I need to invert the mask or not. Right now it is black. We are multiplying black, so we might need to invert it. But um, we will know soon enough. So yeah, if you want to invert it, you will need to add like a one minus node. Although, of course, we cannot see it in here. So that will just invert this mask. And now you can see, oh yeah, here, see? So we do need to probably leave it like this for now. Okay, so that's pretty much our material already. So very simple. So we just have like a basic mask setup and for the rest a very basic color setup. Now all you need to do is you just need to go ahead and go in here. Right click, create material instance, mos underscore zero one. Create material instance, mos underscore zero two. Create material instance, mos underscore zero three. I should have actually done that on here, but it doesn't matter. Then let's go ahead and open up these three moss materials and just drag them over into their own window and the whole reason why i why i'm doing this is so that i can go up here and then we have our moss mask and let's see so the masks need to go from dense to not dense I hope I say that correctly because I sometimes like to swap them around. So moss 2 needs to be mask 2. And moss 3 needs to be mask 3 over here. Yeah, well, we'll we will know soon enough. So having all of this stuff done, I'm just going to drag this over here. We can now open up our rock and we can now properly assign our materials. So if we scroll up, it's easier if I just have this to the side. I know that Unreal Engine 5 has a new content browser down here, but it's really annoying because it just keeps dropping down and everything. So we are going to get started with our base rock, which uh, I did already drag on here. And then we are going to get started with our moss 01, moss 02, and moss 03 over here. Save that up. So now you got something like this. It does not look very good yet, but um, this is because we are just going to, of course, work on this. So let's go ahead and I probably also want to control my moss tiling mask. So if we go in here, that's probably the first thing. Let's copy this and paste it in here and just call this moss underscore mask underscore tiling. Throw this into your UVs. There we go. Let's go ahead and save this. It, the moss is really dark, so that's something that I I will we will need to like balance this out. But here we have now some tiling. So the only annoying thing is that we need to do this like for every single material, non-stop, if we want to control it. So let's get started with the first one. Let's set the tiling to like five over here. And let's see. So most likely what is happening over here. Oh wait, it's because I'm doing the wrong tiling. There we go. That's better. So let's set the moss tiling for this one to like three ish and yeah actually the actual moss tiling i'm probably going to set to like 10. it's sometimes a bit hard to see with stuff this small here yeah, but you can see how little it was and now we have our mask strength over here and i just want to quickly turn that all the way up so that i can also control my mask fading and see ah see here so the mask fading is working pretty well so you can see that now here, if we turn this all the way up, you can see that you have like a really strong mossy look. But if I just nicely fade this down, uh, one ish, yeah, one ish should be fine. Maybe a little bit lower, I don't know. And of course, you can even paint in your vertex colors to have like more moss uh, going away. We can even just play around with that a little bit later on. So let's have a look. Our, now it's mostly balancing. So let's say we set our base strength to probably around like three and then we have this one and this moss i'm gonna let's see so we have five three over here let's say like two maybe yeah you can see like so let's set the base strength to two and three i i want to like play around a little bit more with my masks after this but i will do that it's like probably like a time lapse just some balancing out but uh, this is the general concept that you can see over here you can Start to see it working, but it's not yet working exactly the way that I want to. So let's go ahead and let's have a look. 
here this one i can barely even see I set this to five here see so you cannot really see it working that well so let's set this to like a tiling of maybe like 10 over here set this tiling to maybe like five over here there we go. So now it's start here. Let's see it's starting to look a little bit fuzzy already. It's not perfect yet. Also, one thing that I want to do that is actually quite important. I can't believe that I forgot to do that. Is select all of your um, moss pieces. And I'm just going to add a smooth modifier. And I'm just going to basically smooth this 100%. So that as you can see over here, it just looks completely smooth. And then I can just do a very quick re-export. So uh, let's go file. Export selection. There we go. Easy does it. And then we can just go ahead and go back into Unreal. And we can just load this in. Which I believe that I quickly just threw it in here. So let's re-import. There we go. See, so that will just make everything look a little bit softer. Of course, what you also want to do is you also want to like balance out your texture a little bit to make it fit better with everything else so for example what i would want to do is open up this texture and then maybe it would be nice if i set my brightness to like 1.5 and then maybe set my saturation to like 0 0.7 or something so that it looks a little bit duller like this and then once i've done that i can always go in here and i can use my color overlay to let's say that i want to go for like some more like yellowish moss like you can see over here like i can just always set this to be like a little bit orange copy over the srgb and just paste this into all of our other materials and just like that you can kind of like mess around with things so let's say we do something like this let's say i'm also going to go into my fading strength to set this to like 1.5 maybe oh no 0 0.5 i mean Ooh, let's have a mind 0 0.6 Okay, this is more sensitive than I expected. Let's do let's do 0 0.7 and then let's do MOS 2, 0 0.6, and MOS 3, 0 0.55 or something like that. Just to give it also like a little bit of fading. And let's see. So over here, this works really well. Now, what you ideally would want to do is you would also want to like paint on the moss a little bit on your rocks over here. I think that would give you like a better base. And if you want, you can also do that in here. So you can... For example, set this one to be the red channel. And then if you want, you can also go ahead and... Uh, we need our base rock for this, actually. So I'm not even working in the correct material. We need to go for... So you would want to use this one, but this is, of course, a material that is specifically for... Um, mega scans so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to very quickly set up the same material so if i do for example material so at this point you already know the technique you can just play around with it so if you don't want to bother watching me uh, feel free to leave and like and subscribe but for now let's call this rock underscore master and i'm going to do this super super quickly so all you really need is you just need to go ahead and you need to import your 4k textures into your rock master like this over here and then you basically need to add like a very simple linear interpolate which is a lerp and you basically want to lerp your rock along with your moss so, and you want to do the lerp via a vertex color so here let me just show you what i mean so we add a vertex color and you set the vertex color for example to be uh, let's say green and we basically lerp this and then we can also go ahead and we just want to duplicate this so that we have these pieces here we go so we lerp those using the same alpha and then we also oh, for these ones uh, i'm just going to use only the roughness for now so i'm only going to lerp the green channel so that i can just quickly throw this into my roughness because the other channels i don't really care for right now so I basically lerp this together using a vertex color. And then if I would save this, I can go in here and I can apply my texture. You can see that it's a little bit darker because I changed my, because in the previous material I changed some stuff. But now I can go to activate mesh painting. 
and I can basically go to paint and I want to paint only in the green channel and let's set my size a little bit lower and then I should be able to paint in uh, set my strength a bit higher is this working? yes, no no, it is not working, that is interesting let's just try to do like a fill so then we can just see if we go to our color view Ah, it's because we had the colors red to... Okay, so if we go to off, we want to just swap around our color. And now if we paint... Ah, see, now, now the painting works. Although we definitely need to add, like, tiling. But uh, you get the general idea of it. You can paint this in to, like, increase the look. Of course, down here, it already looks quite good because we already had, like, some moss sitting at, like, the very base. So you basically can just paint this wherever you want. Wherever you want to have like some extra moss. So this will be like the classic flat moss that you have over here. And then on top of that you will have like the fuzzy moss to get like an interesting effect. So let me just do this. I'm painting it down in these areas. Let's not forget there. And of course on the main one. Like this. Okay, nice. So that should be enough. And then if I just go to my rock master. Actually, you know what? I'm going to just duplicate. So Ctrl C and Ctrl V it. And I'm just going to go ahead and set my moss. Only my moss. So that means this one. Uh, this one over here. And this one. I want to set my tiling. And I'm already going to set my tiling a default of like 10. Just so that I can now go in here and I can apply it. But yeah, this was basically like a very basic overview. What I recommend is just to play around a bit more with your masks over here. So now you can see here. So I would recommend like playing around a little bit more with your masks. Over here you can see like the fuzziness is working quite well. Um, you can also play around with your distance. Here, see, so the fuzziness is working quite well. And specifically from a dis from like a distance, this is what you want to see. That you get like a little bit of like that nice fuzzy feeling. And yeah, that was pretty much it. If you want to create some moss over here. Also play, play around with uh, the plane distance. So if I go ahead and let's see, am I able to, for example, just drag this one in? You can kind of like see the difference between... Before and after. So this one is like before and then this one is after. And you just get like this nice little mossy feeling. Throw in a little bit of like foliage that you ha that I have over there. And you can get something really nice really quickly. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time.